now we're going to study cyclic coding uh, why do we need something like uh, cyclic coding first we must realize that uh, cnf is a very desirable form uh, first reason it has very few connectives you have a conjunction disjunction and not very simple structure you have a conjunction and they are disjunction over literals finally a lot of problems can be naturally encoded into cnf so now the question is uh, how do we get to cnf the transformation using distributivity which we have seen explodes the formula and therefore it's undesirable it's just become formulas becomes very large so is there a way to avoid the explosion can we do something so that this explosion does not occur while we are trying to convert our formula into cnf yes there is a way and this method is called Cyton's coding. Since there are no free lunches in this world, there comes with a cost. So let's look at the Cyton code. So by introducing fresh variables, uh, Cyton coding can translate every formula into an equisatisfiable CNF formula without exponential explosion. So how do we do that? The first thing we do is we get rid of uh, uh, XOR implication and equivalent symbols and convert the formula into NNF. Once we have NNF formula, we do the following. We look for a conjunction such that it is under some disjunction. If that is the case, we say we will say we are going to get rid of this conjunction. What do we do? We replace this conjunct by a fresh symbol p in the form of and add these extra clauses and now after this transformation we go back again and try to look for again the row conjunct which is under some disjunction and try to apply with this formation again with another fresh variable we keep doing it until we do not have any any conjunct lying in it under any disjunction so let's look at an example consider this formula it has two conjunctions sitting under a disjunction and if we had uh, trans applied distributivity and to do the transformation via distributivity we would have created mn clauses now, if we apply this Cyton encoding, we must observe there are two conjuncts P1 to Pn and Q1 to Qn and which are wrongly placed. For each of them, I will create a variable x and y. If we replace uh, these conjuncts by, the, by our new fresh variables, we obtain this class. And once after, after the replacement, we also need to add extra clauses, we call that. And we'll say if x is true then pi must be true and similarly we add the clauses for not x or qj note that in this transformation i have m plus n plus one clauses finally and only two variables introduced now let's see why this transformation may preserve satisfiability so we will do the proof only in one direction we'll say that if uh, my transform formula is satisfiable by some model m then the original formula was satisfied by the same model m. how do we prove that uh, let's suppose m satisfies uh, this formula uh, your transformed formula and we will have three cases after that okay so uh, let's look at the one case one by one first case I will say M satisfies P if that is the case then uh, you can see that M satisfies P then M must satisfy these all of them therefore this this literal becomes false therefore gi's must be true so therefore gi must be true therefore 
m must satisfy the conjunction of g1 to gn and we already have m satisfies v and we also have m satisfies fp so what we can do we can do the substitution okay this formula is satisfied by m and the the truth value of this variable this expression and this expression is same under m therefore we can we can apply substitution theorem and can say that m satisfies f g1 and gn okay so by applying substitution theorem you conclude that m satisfies the original problem now the, there are two more cases well when you the one is assum first assumption was m satisfies p naturally you can say m does not satisfy p. okay but there is a again there is a case split happens and the actually i have to consider this situation m does not satisfy p simultaneously m does not satisfy g1 to g however i know that m satisfies m satisfies uh, f of p and again we can apply directly my my substitution theorem and I obtain uh, that m satisfy so f g1 to g now look at the one more case when m satisfies this formula okay let's consider this situation and why this is a special situation because now there's a disagreement about satisfaction of this guy and this guy so therefore substitution theorem cannot be applied immediately as we have applied in earlier two cases uh, since uh, p f g1 to g n is in nnf form remember that we have translated to nnf when we had substituted this by p then p can must be occurring only positively this cannot be not p anywhere in this formula because laterals always push the negations always push down to the laterals and so, so the large complex formula will not have a not set in top of it okay so if that is the case what we can do we can always change value of p to 1 and we will continue to satisfy fp so m was satisfying uh, fp and now if i flip p to 0 to 1 you're more likely to satisfy this formula right because there's no not p there so therefore m p1 satisfies fp since p does not occur in any of g's because p is a fresh variable so you can easily conclude then modifying value of p does not change the satisfaction Again, now we have an agreement. Now uh, we have this, have this satisf this. Uh, now this model M P one satisfies F P, M P one satisfies G one to G N, and naturally F P one satisfies P. So now we can apply again my sub uh, substitution theorem, and we can conclude that M P one satisfies f of g1 gn but p does not occur in f okay so therefore i can basically ignore this modification and conclude that m satisfies the original we also need to prove uh, the reverse direction which is exercise 7.10 and we have left that for exercise